Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's free online live class. Now, these kinds of classes I want to do relatively often. So if you are new here, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you can get notifications for when these classes go live in the future. I'm so excited to be able to give you all of this information completely for free, and I very much appreciate your support. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, and we're going to get in, into the class and start having some fun with some stackable mugs. Now, Cricut stackable mugs come in a pack of four. I would imagine, I am not sure how many other brands they are, but they are definitely generics. So if you don't get the specific Cricut brand stackable mugs, you can get other ones on Amazon that are a little bit cheaper, probably a lot cheaper, let's be real here. That will probably work just the same. Now, of course, we know that these have to be infusible ink mugs or sublimation mugs. If they're not specifically sublimation or infusible ink mugs, then the process won't work, unfortunately. So that's just one of the main things that we're going to do. Now, this method that we're going to go over today is going to be using the Cricut Mug Press. Now, this is the Cricut Mug Press, and it is super easy to use, super sleek. One of my favorite machines. I'm not going to lie. I love making mugs. But there is a specific diameter of mug that you do actually need to use in order to be able to use these Cricut mugs. So you can't use cone shaped mugs, you can't use slightly larger mugs, slightly smaller mugs, they have to be a specific diameter. And it's kind of the generic um, general diameter that you get from most mugs and that's what we're going to use. And the infusible ink that we're going to use, we're going to be using a full 12 by 12 sheet. So 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter sheet. And it is just in the cupboard. So I will show it to you. Because I packed it away and forgot to get it out of the cupboard again. <laughs> so I'm going to be using the plaid one, the black and white plaid one, or they call it Buffalo check, which is one of my favorites. And I'm so glad to see so many of you here tuning in for this live class. So hi, Susan. Great to see you again. Very, very excited to have you with me. Gina, my mom. Welcome. Lovely to have you. And Vilamin, welcome. You are most welcome, Vilamin. I'm very excited to be giving this free live class to you guys today. So I've also been wanting to make these Christmas mugs for a while so again very excited to be able to make these mugs with you guys what we're also going to use is a bowl now when it comes to making your mugs clean or cooling your mugs off I like to use a the hot water the, the, the warm water method so essentially what this means is when the mug comes out of the mug press you plunge it into warm water, definitely not cold water. We want warm water because the mug coming out of the mug press is 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. If you dunk that very hot mug into cold water, it's going to crack. Ask me how I know this. I knew this beforehand. Have I still cracked a mug? Absolutely. It's okay. It happens. <laughs> So I like to keep a, a nice metal bowl or a plastic bowl. I prefer the metal ones just in case something, you know, melts or goes awry. So the metal or a silicone bowl is what I would recommend. And then I also have a flask with me with some warm water because the warm water obviously just helps cool the mug, mug down faster. Because when the mug is still hot and the ink and whatnot is still on the mug, heat rises so because of the way that infusible ink or sublimation ink works it is activated by heat so it changes into a gas and gas with heat rises so what will happen if you take the infusible ink off your or the the sheet off your mug and just let it to stand and cool down without anything on it the ink will then start trailing upwards and you'll get a little bit of a fuzzy look on your mug so you can let it cool down with the, the, the cover on. A lot of people find that that works well for them. There are many different ways to do this. I prefer the way of cooling it down almost immediately. I find that it works for me, but if another method works for you, that is 100% all right. So Zanette, Zanit, 
Zanette is with us as well. Sorry, the chat is very small and in the corner there. So I'm actually going to pop out the chat and make sure that I'm keeping track of who is joining us today because it's very, very fun to have you all here. And Kim from Fort Myers in Florida. And Zanette is from Sparta, Wisconsin. Oh, I'm so excited to have you all here. Yay. <laughs> One of the other things that we're also going to have with us is a Teflon sheet. Now the Teflon sheet I like to use to wrap around my mugs to make sure that they are all protected. Because when it comes to the ink, like I mentioned, when it's hot, it bleeds out and it gets onto the mug press. So by having a Teflon sheet and even some copy paper, we can stop that from getting onto the mug press. Because what will happen the next time you make a mug is that ink will then warm up again and it'll go onto the next mug. And you'll have like a shadow from the one mug to the next. So we want to make sure that there's no cross-contamination between them. So I use a combination of a Teflon sheet as well as normal copy paper. Silicone paper or butcher paper work as well. Please don't use wax paper as wax melts under heat so that will cause a problem. And Jackie is joining us from Johannesburg. Oh, and Susan is in South Carolina. Fantastic. I'm so glad to have you all here. So that's the main part. I've probably forgotten something. Um, I do have a heat mat that I like to use. Once the mat, once the mug has come down a few notches in temperature, because I don't want the infusible ink to go onto my heat mat. And I do have a, a um, I was going to say a luppy, but those from the US don't understand what luppy is, a uh, cloth, that's the word in English. Um, and Jacqueline is joining us from the Netherlands, welcome. So we're going to start off with actually designing the template. So I'm going to transition into Cricut Design Space. Now the project that I have here, I have shared the link in the description of the video with you guys. So if you want to check it out, please do. It is, um, very easy for you guys to just check out the template and customize it. You can click on make a copy once you've looked through it and then you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing as well. So this template, what I've done is I've taken the standard 300 mil stackable mugs. Now this template is different to the other template that you get for the standard mugs. The stackable mugs are a little bit shorter to be able to fit four on a 12 by 12 sheet. So you will need to have four of them on the sheet in order to make this work. Eileen's also here <laughs> from Tustin, California. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And Zanet says, I blow lappy. <laughs> yes, exactly. The blow lappy, which means the blue cloth. <laughs> um, and Martine is joining us from Belgium. Hello. And Brenda's here as well. Lovely to have you guys. So... When it comes to designing your stackable mug template, what I like to do is I like to have one project that I save as the template so that I can just open that project and then save a copy each time I add something new on. And of course, we're gonna make a Christmas themed mug. And what I like to do, especially because it's the stackable mugs, is I like to have something that works when they're all stacked together. So the one maybe flows into the other one and into the next one into the next one but you also want to make sure that the template that the, each individual mug works by itself because if you have just the one mug on the table you don't want to have half of a saying on the one mug and then it only goes onto the next mug so you want to try and think of something that works with all four of them so I'm going to go into images and I want to add a Christmas tree of course <laughs> so I'm going to search for Christmas tree and we're going to see what comes up now when it comes to the type of design that I'm looking for the things that I'm looking for in this template are going to be a slightly taller tree like I don't want to go for the wider trees because we're working with limited real estate on our actual mugs themselves so we want to try and get designs that are taller rather than wider because a wide design number one might not be visible from one side of the mug to the other we want it to be visible in one frame but also it might not work too well in terms of the actual mug template so a taller tree that is more narrow is what I'm looking for 
and maybe we'll even think about making this span across one or two mugs and not across the entire actual mug themselves. So I just take a look through and see what is available. A lot of these a lot of these will work quite well. I'm also looking for more of a solid shape. So because we're working with the, the buffalo check, we want to make sure that we don't have too much detail. And I want to try and stay away from words as far as I can. I want to just have some pictures that are big enough that we can see them. So anything with too much detail on the edges will probably end up getting a little bit lost on this kind of a, a design. If you had to go with a solid color, like not a patterned color itself, then you could add in a little bit more detail. But because it's a pattern, patterns you kind of have to approach a little bit differently. And there was a tree that I had outlined for this that worked perfectly. And now I've probably scrolled past it already while I was thinking about it while I was talking, which is entirely possible. Um, so we'll see what comes up and there's a couple that I've seen that that might work okay I'm going to go for this one it's nice and soft it's cute and then I'm going to look for reindeer now I want well the reindeer sleigh so I'm going to type in sleigh because at the top of the mug on the one mug right at the top I want to have the Santa sleigh going off into the distance I think that would be very cute even something like that would be perfect. And then I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did with the previous class that I did last week, where we had the kind of houses. So I want to have some trees and then some houses at the bottom. So I'm going to search for house. Oh, that is not house. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to search for house and then I'm going to add a few different houses to the actual design itself. So I like to add more more things than fewer because when I'm searching for these kinds of things I tend to rather delete things that I don't want as opposed to having to go back the whole time and re-add them. So again we're going to look for these simple shapes. I'm going to actually change the operation type to cut only and I can even change it to single layer but that's also fine because I can also make it a single layer. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So I'm going to try and find very much the same kind of houses that we had for the last live stream. And then just add some of the basic ones to the to the canvas. And just add a few of them. And I'm not adding some of them because they have very small thin elements. Infusible ink is nice, but it doesn't often work with the very thin, fine elements that are on the canvas. So I try and stay away from a little bit more detail than I can. <coughs> and now we have all of our elements on our canvas. So what I'm going to do here is zoom out a little bit so that I can see all of my little elements. Hi Zelda, welcome, welcome. And I'm going to see what works on my mugs. So you see what I'm talking about with regards to having mugs that are taller rather than uh, designs that are taller rather than narrow, rather than wide, sorry. Because if we have to add them in here, it's not going to, some of them might work across, across the mugs, but some of them might not. So I want to maybe, maybe we'll add just a few tree, a few houses. Uh, I think I don't like that one. So I'm going to take that one out and I'm going to take that one out as well. So I think I'm just going to have three for now. And then I'm going to add a nice Christmas tree, but the Christmas tree I want to span over maybe two of the mugs. And then maybe this one we can have that spanning over two of the mugs as well. We can remove the little stars, but I think those stars look really cute. So if we want to, we can also add that in there. 
Hi, Dre. Welcome. <laughs> Good to have you. So when it comes to the designing of the, of the actual mug template, like I said, I try and make sure that as much of it spans across the entire mug as possible. I do want to add in a Christmas tree, like an actual, just a normal fern tree. So I'm going to go back to images. Um, I'm going to search for, let's just search for a generic tree. I hope that everybody's week has been so has been good so far. It's obviously Thursday right now and it's Friday tomorrow. Yay. Now again, I'm looking for the type of tree that's just a solid shape that has a little less detail than normal because we don't want a lot of detail on this particular design that I've chosen, the infusible ink. So even something like that would work very well. We might lose some of the effect of the edges, but that's also okay. And something like that. My week has been very busy um, and I'm very excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow is my father's 70th birthday and I'm very excited to give him the card. I'll even show you guys a sneak peek um, as long as he's not watching, which will need to be confirmed over... Um, over over chat by my mom because <laughs> sometimes they sit there and watch the videos together which is makes my heart very happy so I'm going to add those two to the canvas and we're going to maybe slot these in here somewhere as well so now I'm just going to zoom into the bottom of the canvas just to see what my design work looks like and don't worry about colors. We're going to make this all the same color. So ignore colors as far as possible. <laughs> I will pass on your well wishes to my dad. <laughs> now with the base of the Christmas tree, I want to make that a little bit shorter. So I've just selected that layer and I'm going to just zoom in a little bit because I can't move it higher. So when I zoom in, I then have the option to hover over the edge of one of the lines and just make that a little bit shorter because I don't want such a, such a long tree base. <laughs> Dre, I will tell him that you said that. I'm sure he will love that. <laughs> you don't look a day over 90. <laughs> and then we're just going to move the tree like that. and add some of the other trees in here as well. And now these trees, you can also leave them behind the houses because when we make this template all solid, they're going to kind of squash together. So if we want the trees like that, we can put the tree over the house and then have it, having it overlap onto the second mug Oh, excuse me, just so that it looks like it's, you know, going up into the next one. We can also even create a little bit of like a hill so that some of the, the houses stretch over into the second mug and are not only on the first. And in these houses, we can have a little bit smaller in the background. So again, we're thinking of a design that can work on both the mugs individually as well as the mugs apart. So I'm going to try and find something that it maybe looks like a hill or a pathway or a road or something like that that's going to fill up that negative space there in the bottom corner. So no, not adding in text, we're adding in an image. <laughs> so let's look for road. <laughs> and hopefully we'll find something that works for our design and the little space that we have there because these are see like something like that that would probably work quite well or we can just carry on looking even that we can remove some of the aspects of that and that would also work very nicely 
And again, this is where I just add a few different designs to my map, to my map, I'm seeing map now, um, to my, my canvas. And I'm just going to see what works. And then if it doesn't work, then I'll try something different. Now, this is obviously the whole design aspect of, of design space, which is quite fun. So I'm going to try each one of these separately. It's going to make them smaller. We can maybe even have that one going off the edge like that, which looks quite nice. So that one's a win. That one looks quite cool. Uh, let's just make that one a little bit smaller as well. <laughs> that one looks okay. I prefer the first one. So out of the choice of those two, I'll probably go with the first one. And then this one is facing the wrong way. So in order to get that facing the right way, I'm going to click flip and flip horizontal. <coughs> and then maybe tilt it a little bit, make it maybe a little bit narrower, and then maybe even overlap it there with that base of the tree. <coughs> so that it looks like that. That also can work. So you guys need to think about whether you like number one or number two. Or we could even <coughs> remove some of the trees that we have already or even just remove these trees and then use this one but I think I like the first one okay so Susan says the first one I like your idea Susan I think the first one for me kind of was the the best the favorite Welcome, Wilhelmine. <laughs> yes, I, I totally agree with you, Susan. Does everybody else agree with Susan? Should we keep it at the first one? It works quite nicely. It um, I find that it, it, it looks good. Okay, great. And then we can also find something to go in this little space here. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, maybe. I like the way you think, Susan. So let's try making that a little bit bigger and maybe just tilting it a tiny bit so that you have a little bit more of it in the a moon. Oh, that is a very good idea. Should we put the moon in the top left-hand corner? Or the bottom right of the second mug what do you think top left or the bottom right of the second mug we could always just make this a little bit bigger and tilt it a little bit more top top left okay cool so let's add a moon See, and that's also why I don't always, I have a vague idea of the design that I want to do in these live classes, but I like the interactivity that you give me. So I'm very glad that we, we have, we have the option to do this. Do we want to go with a realistic moon or a not so realistic moon? We could try something like that. Or the second moon might be a little bit trickier to get right because of all the little pieces that need to be cut out. Um, I also quite like the first one. You can even add a cloud or two. So maybe I'll take that one and then just use the clouds in that one. Not so realistic. I agree. Okay, great. Let's just try with those. <coughs> zoom out make these a little bit smaller so that it works and I'm going to delete that and move this I'm going to delete the actual moon because I don't want that I just kind of want the clouds and if I want to duplicate something 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And then with it selected, I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and just drag it. So what that does is it creates a duplicate without having to go right click duplicate. It is, it's just such a game changer. I absolutely love it. Maybe we make that tree, I mean that house a little bigger. And maybe even put him on the base of that mug so that it looks a little better. Put a cloud or two here. Maybe even a cloud or two there. And now what I want to do with this one is I want to invert it so that it's because otherwise it's going to be a red cloud, a red moon with clouds on the outside. So I'm going to click on contour and I'm going to remove the outside and then just have it like this. Maybe I'll even remove some of those dots because the dots, as nice as they look, especially the ones on the end, they're going to cause the design to be too, it might not work too well. And then let's just flip these horizontally so that it looks a little bit different and even make them a little bit bigger. <laughs> Mom, don't worry. It's just about practice. So the more that you repeat these designs, the more that you do them all the time, the more that you repeat these techniques, the more that you'll remember them. So don't stress. And now I'm just doing some fine tweaking of the actual design itself. I shortened that one, so I'm just going to lengthen it a little bit again. So that we have all of these little trees. <coughs> The dots take away from the stars. Susan, I completely agree with you. I was looking at that as well and trying to wonder if I like them or not. Um, so the tree star overlaps. Good catch, Diana. Again, this is why we, we have you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all of the contours on the moon. And I'm going to just select the moon because I don't feel like selecting each of the dots individually. And then I'm going to select the round main part so that it's just the solid moon and not the inverse of the moon. So now we just have the moon itself and the clouds, maybe even move the clouds a little bit closer to the moon and have it just like that. A larger moon, I can do that. That's a good idea. There we go. Maybe a little bit more in and then move the clouds maybe like that. Or should we flip the clouds? No. And then have the clouds facing that way. What do you think? And then I'm going to, so what I'm going to do with the stars that's overlapping that particular star. So I'm going to select that layer. Again, click contour. And then just try and figure out exactly which star that is. And I think it's just that one. But it's not reflecting here. So let's click contour again. Uh, it's a little bit over. There we go. <coughs> Perfect. Clouds overlapping the moon. That might be a little bit difficult because it's all going to be the same color. So if I change this to black, then that's kind of, well, it's, it, it actually, if I change the gray layers to, it's, it's a red and black checkered. So I'm going to change that to red and then I'm going to change all of these elements to white just to give you guys a little bit of an idea on what it's going to look like and this is what I do with a lot of the projects that I work on I try and get as good an idea of what the end project is going to look like with the color so once it's all white and we've just got those ones that I need to change to white so that's mainly what it's going to look like flip the moons 
back over. Do you mean as in a, a what do they call it? It's waxing and then waning. So do you want to do a waning moon? So we do it like that. Oh, the clouds. Okay. So if we flip them back vertically, then maybe we do it just like that. <coughs> that could look quite cute. I quite like that. What I what I do want to do here is I want to just slice out this um, path. So I want to cut off what is on the edge there. So I'm going to take the actual mug, the red section of the mug. I'm going to duplicate that. And then with the duplicate, that with the original, I'm going to slice that with the winding road. So I've only got the red section and the winding road selected. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to delete what is on the outside of the winding road. So the winding road, I'm going to change that to white. And then this one, I'm then going to put back on the template. Just make sure that it lines up. Just so that when I cut everything, it's not going to be too big to cut. The, having that little house overlapping there a little bit is not a problem for me. So I'm going to leave that. Yeah, Susan, definitely. Um, I, I, I like the way that you think with that one. I think flipping the clouds over was definitely the right call there. Again, this is why I'm so happy that you guys are all here. We can make these design decisions together. Maybe make that tree, that house a little bigger. And there we go. So now what happens with these mugs is that, like I said, they all work individually, but they all work together as well. So that's why I really like this kind of an idea. And then maybe, oh, was it the other clouds that you were talking about? Okay, let's see. Like that. So that it takes up a little bit more of that space. We can also even separate these. Both. I just want to make those maybe a little bit longer. So should we leave it like this? Is everybody happy with the design the way that it is now? I think it's quite cute. I think we've got lots of fun elements set up. I'm really liking the way that this design looks. Maybe I'll make this one just a little bit smaller. Oh, let me delete this two, two layers there. Make that a tiny little bit smaller there. It makes the eye flow in one direction. You're 100% correct, Susan. That's why, again, I'm going to say it 100 times. That's why I love having you all here. Because I'm good at the technical things. I'm not always as good at the design work. <laughs> so these little dots that we have here are actually going to be white, uh, red. So if we take the Christmas tree as an example, then that section is going to be red. And the little star... Is going to be lost a little bit but that's fine maybe what I can do is slice the star and the Christmas tree just because I want to remove that little section on the inside where they overlap so we can maybe just leave it like that or weld that little piece so there are now two sections you'll see that in a second and then we can just move the star up a little bit so the star looks like it's floating on the tree as opposed to where before it was overlapping and it would have looked like one solid white object oh a stem for the star yeah so that's kind of what i did now um i think that we can so there's just a little bit of a base. I can even make it a little bit bigger, a little bit higher up so that it's a little bit more 
identified. And again, this is something that because I'm making this in design space, I can share with you and you guys can make it all on your on your on your side as well. So let's go save. And now because we we're working on the template, we don't want to save this project on. We don't want to just save it generically. We want to save as and create a new project. So let's go save as. And then we're going to go stackable mug template. Christmas. Eve and I'm going to save it to both my mug press and my Christmas collections and I'm going to click save. We might even we could even do the same on those clouds as what we did with the star but I think I'm going to leave that because I want the clouds to just kind of overlap there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of the white elements and I'm also going to delete that slice result there I'm going to take all of the white elements well actually I'm going to select everything so I've just gone control a on my keyboard and I'm going to deselect the group with the actual mugs the mug templates themselves and this may seem a little bit strange but I'm going to combine and you can't see it, it's underneath my head, but combine and weld. Now, the reason why I do that is because I don't want it to overlap the cuts and things like that. I want it to cut as all one solid object. So then you also know, you get a better sense of what it's gonna look like at the end and how it's gonna all turn out. So now that I've made another change, <laughs> I'm going to go save. Oh, I'm so glad, Mary. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this. And I'm going to select everything and make sure that it's attached so that it's all one color. It's going to cut all like that. And it's going to work perfectly. Now, I'm going to switch on my, my maker because we're going to be start, cut, start cutting it. Oh, it's already on. <laughs> There's a weird tiny dot between tree two and house two. Oh, good catch, Susan. You have the eyes of a hawk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the weld result, going to contour it, and I'm going to remove that tiny little dot. And if Cricut had just left the contour feature alone, perfect as it was, it would have been a lot easier to deselect that tiny little dot. There we go. Can you tell I don't like the way that the contour feature works now? It's it's irritating me. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now that we've and then the last line in the road. Mm. So the last line in the road at the top or the last line in the road. Oh, there we go. Jeez. How, how did you even see that? That is impressive. That is very impressive. Okay. We're going to go and contour again. And I'm going to search for that tiny little dot there. Very, very good eyes. I'm sitting here in front of, okay, granted it's very small on my screen, um, I've got a very, very big screen, so it's quite small. And I have my glasses on, and I didn't see that. <laughs> very impressive. But now, I, I think it's just, it's it's cut off the bottom. So it's actually going down, up, down. So we won't be able to cut that one off, which is fine. That's not, not the end of the world. And I've been asked to make it red again. Just so we can see. The white line at the top of the dark gray just like the rest yeah so we can leave it it doesn't matter what color it's gonna be it's gonna be on the canvas um, it'll be totally fine we can just leave it just like this <laughs> so we can go save save like I said I always save my project just before I make it it shows up when you try to contour. Yeah, it, it did show something, but um, it didn't quite quite work. 
So I just want to double check the dimensions. So the height is 29.59. And I think that's because of the base of the tree over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shape. And I'm just going to cut that off. So I'm going to position this at the bottom here. And go across there like that. I'm going to select the weld result and then just slice that slice that off. Twenty nine point four seven, so we're still a little bit too tall. Is there something maybe the designs just aren't close enough together? Which is fine. So in this case, what I normally do is I normally just make it a tiny bit. Uh, let's rather change the whole thing. Because it's two millimeters. It's not going to have that much of an effect. Three hundred mil stackable. 7.28, 27.06. So if you want to make sure on the sizes themselves, what you can always do is you can go into, I think it was images, and we search for stackable, Ooh, not attackable, stackable. I will go over the slice again in a second, Susan. So Jacqueline says, do you ever use Canva or a program like that? I actually, when I'm designing things that I want to share, I use Silhouette Design Space. Silhouette Studio, I always say that, Silhouette Design Space. Silhouette Studio, because it works as an SVG and it's just a lot easier to work with for me than it is on, um, on Cricut Design Space. And then I can share them, I can save it as an SVG and share it and things like that. So Susan, what I did was I just overlapped, I just took a square and overlap the base of that and then I selected the weld result of the layer because you can you slice two layers at a time so I just overlapped whatever was going over the edge of this mug template right here so I know that that's what I want to cut off so you just position that just a little bit at the base and everything that is that the gray is overlapping on the red when you select those two layers it'll slice it off and that's kind of the perfect part of um, of how to do that. Hi Michelle, I do have lots of Silhouette videos actually on my channel uh, because I started out with Silhouette and I only got my first Cricut I think it was almost a year after having started my YouTube channel so there's quite a few, my, my, my early videos are, are Silhouette videos just to, so that slicing I did just to get that base section off. So we're going to go make. And now it all fits onto one mat. Perfect. Let's go continue. You are most welcome, Susan. And I'm going to connect to my machine and search for infusible ink. It's one of my favorited and I always cut my infusible ink on more just because it's infusible ink is one of those things like you don't want to run it through the machine twice if you can avoid it. So you want to make sure that it's going to cut properly, but you also need to be careful that you don't cut too deep and cut through the infusible ink because the backing sheet of the infusible ink is like just a plastic. And if you cut through it, you may actually end up messing up your design. It's not as durable as the backing of HTV or iron-on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hop over to the machine side, clear up my workspace, and take a look there. So we're going to go to the overhead camera, move some of my tech out the way, and I'm going to bring you guys along with me for the ride. There we go. All right. So we have our buffalo plaid and our mugs, which I'm just going to 
put up here for now. And then I'm going to use my standard grip mat. So I'm going to, oh, I haven't even opened this one yet. That's how fresh and new this one is. <laughs> oh, you guys are like looking at the ceiling. There we go. And I want to make sure that I can follow the chat. So let's take a look, see. So we're going to open up our infusible ink. It makes me a little bit sad. That means that I only have one of these pages of infusible ink. But I suppose what I can always do, if I really wanted to, is just get my some of my friends to print me a buffalo plaid, buffalo check um, sublimation page. Because the infusible ink is so expensive. So this is desiccant which is a moisture absorber. So I like to keep these in my infusible ink because they shouldn't get moist. Moist again, for those that may not like the word, sorry. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take the black and take out this piece of fabric is polyester, which is just a test piece of fabric that you can use. I have so many of those lying around. They're lying around everywhere at this point. But then I pop the rest of the infusible ink back into the packet and pop that back into the box. Okay. And this is just butcher paper that you can use to protect your design. So you can cut it up and use that. Now, I like to use my standard grip mat because with infusible ink, you want to make sure that it doesn't move around at all while it's cutting. And then I place the one side down first. There's also a mark on the moon. The moon, that was the um, overlap of the clouds. So I don't mind leaving that there. Okay. Now, make sure that your hands are clean when you're working with infusible ink. Any oils and things like that that you have on your hands will transfer onto the ink. So that was the bubbles that I'm pushing out. So you want to make sure that all of the bubbles are out from underneath your material. And that's why I like to use the brayer because I'm not rubbing my hands across the ink and displacing some of the ink, preventing some of it from transferring onto the mugs. When you use your brayer, it's much better for your ink because it means that it won't damage it. So I'm going to load this into the Cricut. And I apologize for those of you that are motion sick. Actually, let me just do this. Let me switch to the webcam so that when I adjust the webcam, the camera, it's not going to make you guys motion sick, <laughs> which I probably should do every time I cut something. Ooh. There we go. Okay, perfect. So we're going to load it in and I always just press the bottom just give a little bit of a pressure onto the bottom of the mat you don't have to press it in just provide resistance we're going to load it in hi orla we're making stackable mugs with the most divine design that everybody has contributed to i'm very grateful so susan says do they work as eyeglass wipes too let's see i mean it's polyester they're relatively um soft it's like a polyester cotton type feel so they might be a little bit too abrasive for glasses wipes but let's see and now this is going to take a while to cut so we can have a chat <laughs> so that's the nice thing about doing this kind of a design on the larger machine 
If you were doing it on your joy, you would have to separate all of them out into four individual pieces, and then maybe the things won't work out quite well. Um, do you always keep your Cricut rollers off the ink sheet? Yes, my Cricut rollers are always on the side. I think it's just a, a force of habit. I very, I very often find that I get, like especially with things like vinyl and whatnot, sometimes when you're cutting vinyl, there's a, like a little bit of a mark on the vinyl from the, the little feet on the rollers. So I just leave mine there. And when I'm working with things like craft foam or balsa wood, nine times out of 10, I will forget to move the rollers off to the side. So they just permanently stay there. Um, maybe I shouldn't, I don't know. Maybe it's not a good idea, but let's see. <laughs> it hasn't let me down so far. So I think it's, it's, I think we should be all right. I could actually even start switching the mag press on, <coughs> excuse me, so that once we're done cutting, we can actually just start straight away. But that's also quite fun. That's, I suppose that's the advantage of the, of, of cutting the things on the joy is that when you're done with one, you cut one and you can make the next one. But you tend to waste a little bit more material unless you're cutting them down perfectly to size. So that's a little bit tricky there as well. You move yours a lot, but you're afraid that after a while they would become too loose. That's a good point. I haven't thought of that. I don't think so. I don't think the kind of wear and tear that we're going to be doing. I mean, if you're going to be moving them seven times a day, then yes, they probably would. Slowly, small particles of plastic would chip off that we wouldn't even, that wouldn't even be noticeable to us. So they might do that over time if you move them, you know, four or five or six times a day. But I don't think that generally that it would make too much of a difference. Oh, it's starting to look very cool. Now it's doing the outside line of the reindeer and the sleigh. Very exciting. So what kind of projects are you guys working on at the moment? Obviously, while we wait for this to cut, we can just have a, a little bit of a fun chat here while we are, while we're all live. And we can just watch the machine do, do her thing. <laughs> Is anybody working on anything interesting at the moment? I would actually like to show you a sneak peek of a video coming next week. So let me just switch to, oh, I suppose I can just show you here. Ta-da! It's how to make a little gift bag. So that's this one. And this is just a printed a printed sheet that I did on my, I printed with my Epson. The paper and my Epson are not the most compatible. So with this little design, you can see how the red bleeds a little bit. And it isn't as crisp and clear because the paper is not really compatible with my inkjet printers. It's more of a, an industrial type paper, but this design will be free to use on Design Space. It's a, just a little gift bag that I created. And I'm also busy working on another template as well, but that I might only finish on the weekend because I need to make a t-shirt for my dad tomorrow and some fun things. Ooh, you received your tumblers today, Jessica. That's fantastic. That's very exciting. I can't wait to see what you make. Please send me photos. <laughs> Overloaded with work, so can't even play with it just yet. That's fine. I don't mind that. That means that that there's that you're earning money and that money's coming in, which is great. And that makes me happy to see my friends succeeding, especially at this time of the year when competition is 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 tight um, so you know receiving new things is receiving orders and things like that is very good very very good Susan says she's putting together a new craft room yay trying to fit in so many supplies from various rooms is daunting and to make it accessible friendly for your medical issues to fit the three and to fit the three cats oh my word that's quite a tall order yes I know what you mean it's um it's difficult for me my room is very small like 
it's difficult for me to explain, but my arm can stretch and reach almost. Okay, you see the camera a little bit here. But if you look here at this one, my arm, I just have to lean over and grab those things over there. And then I can kind of touch the other side of my room over here. That's my wall. That's my cupboard. And that's my wall. And then this is the wall here where the TV is. And that's what I'm looking at currently to read the, the comments. So I understand you with this working in a small space with lots of things. It is very, very daunting. And especially, like you said, accessibility issues, even more tricky. So good luck. <laughs> My cat bed is also just behind me. <laughs> um, Z Mary said she made 250 tickets for her running club's charity pub run this past weekend. Shoo, it was a lot of work. Wow, that sounds amazing. What kind of tickets were they? Were they right and cut or did you add some foil in there? Perforation? How did it work? And Zelda says she wish she had the time to craft at this point, working yourself to death. You're tired. It's the end of the year. I'm, I'm surprised it isn't Christmas already with the way that I feel. So I understand you. <laughs> We're all, it's, it's, it's difficult. So keep in there. You got this. You can do it. Um, what do you mean by let it print by a friend? Can you make some kind of copy on a sublimate paper? So when it comes to printing with sublimation, you can design something. You can obviously print photos and things like that and have that printed. So I would design something and then have my friend print it and then I can just press it. You don't need to go to the whole effort of cutting it and doing all of those kinds of things. You literally just design it, print it and press it. It's a little bit easier. It's a, lot, a little bit more fun. And a couple of my friends have sublimation printers. I do. I have a sawgrass, but I actually need to get rid of it. Uh, it's just taking up space and I can get a small portion of money for it. So I need to do that. I don't use it. <laughs> um, your, so I hope that answers your question. Your son, my son and I have a company making chocolates. Ooh, that's nice. He makes chocolates and I make the boxes. We're very busy with Christmas orders at the minute, I can imagine. Some of the elements of the boxes you cut on your Cricut. Oh, that's very cool. So my hands feel a little bit clammy right now. So what I'm going to do before I play with the, before I touch and handle the infusible ink, I'm going to wipe them down with some rubbing alcohol. Um, I probably should do this with a spray and just spray them, but my spray bottle is empty and I am too lazy to fill it. <laughs> I actually need to buy a refill and I just keep forgetting. So now I'm pretty sure I've run out of rubbing alcohol. That's the one thing that I go through, but I buy the small bottles anyway, because I suppose it doesn't, I don't use it all that much. So I just wipe down my hands a little bit before I actually play with the, the infusible ink. And I'm going to check the cut before I unload it. So when it comes to just looking at whether it's actually cut through, you can just pull up the end. And then just make sure that you're pulling off something on the template that, that should be pulled off. Like that little section, that's not going to be cut at all. So I'm just going to pull that off and that's perfect. So I'm going to then unload and we can start weeding. While we start weeding, um, back that away, and then I'm just going to move the camera and make sure so that you guys don't get too disoriented. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch the mug press on so long so that it can warm up while we're busy prepping this. It doesn't take too long to warm up, so I don't need to put it on too far ahead of time but I do like to make sure that it is warmed up because the mugs take about six minutes to press so there we go it's busy warming up and I'm going to I say there you go it's busy warming up like you guys can see you're looking at me <laughs> oh so Laura is joining us from Indiana amazing um, uh, Zelda, I'm very glad that this time that you have with us is heaven. Very, very happy to hear that. My mom says she has five cats. Um, she used to have ten. I can confirm that. Um, 
Was I also part of the instigators that increased her cat amount to 10? Uh, no comment. <laughs> I'm just going to put the covering back onto my mat. Because this is a relatively clean mat. So I want to keep it clean as far as I can. Okay, there we go. Kim says she loves my organization. Thank you. I actually did a craft room tour a couple of months ago. So if you want to see, I've changed a lot of things in my craft room. So if you want to check that out, be sure to go and look at the video on my channel. Um, it'll be a few videos back. Write and cut with a perforation in between each one. Oh, those tickets sound amazing, Mary. Um, I must actually share the link to my facebook group that i want to that i'm trying to build up or start i don't have anybody in it yet but i want to start like a little community so that you guys can share things with me and have other people commenting on it and things like that i know that most most other youtubers also have their own little community i would like one too okay so because this was a double cut on the outside we were able to separate the infusible ink from the rest of the sheet and if it's not separating I'm just going to tear it because I don't have the time <laughs> um so L Laura said hello from Indiana always learn new things when you're watching my videos oh thank you so much I'm so glad very it my, helps me um okay let me just cut this down quickly so that I don't waste too much time sometimes all you need to do is just start the the cut there there we go there we go that was all we needed and i'm going to keep this so the reason why i'm trying not to tear this or damage it too much is because in the last live stream that we had i made uh this was the clear one I made these out of my scraps so these actually fit perfectly in this little negative space so what I like to do is then use these pieces for the this is just acrylic this is white acrylic um, if you want to go back and watch that video from last week then you can see exactly how we did that but it's just normally normal pressed onto acrylic Unfortunately, working right through, only home on Christmas Day, and only able to take leave after April. Well, that means that you're earning an income, which is good, and we're grateful, even though it's going to be difficult, and I wish you strength, because even though it's, it's, it's great, it is still difficult, and I recognize that. So, good luck. I'm sending you love, and you will get, get through it. <laughs> Susan, I agree. Chocolate does sound amazing right now. Although it's a little bit hot here at the moment, so chocolate would just be melted. So I'm going to start, this is the top one, I'm going to start with the bottom one. Because when it comes to building up my mugs, once they're cut, I want to build them up, I mean once they're pressed, I want to start with the bottom one and then build up. Okay, so now we have to pull these out correctly for some reason the holes in the tree didn't cut so i'll have to go back there the mug press is warm so i'm going to have to go back and see why that didn't cut so let me just level that out and zoom you guys in so that you can see what i'm talking about and stabilize the camera as well because the bobbing of the camera also drives me nuts. Alright. And then this here is also going to come out. And we're going to pull that up here. I'm trying to do this as gently as I can. And what you can even do if you really want to, if you really want to be able to try try this as far as you can, 
is to save this and use it as a, a positive negative one. Design mugs with your tips of your design in your last video. Your workshop made it so easy. I'm so glad. I'm very glad. That makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, Frankie and Phantom. Those those two cats were 100% my fault. <laughs> the one was uh, abandoned and the other one had a... I, I hesitate to say broken leg because his leg wasn't broken. But it... Um, there was a, he had a serious problem and he needed medical attention. So I brought him home. <laughs> Thank you, Zelda. I'm glad. I'd love to have you in the Facebook group. After you're live, you'll do a memorial Christmas baubles for fallen dogs. Oh, that's so special. That's very special. A no waste project. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we've got a couple pieces that are coming up. That don't want to stay down so I'm just going to take my weeding tool and press that down and pull up the rest of the infusible ink just to make sure that they stay behind every now and then it happens on a project there we go there we go all right so we've got the base and I just need to weed out the door handle And the base of the tree from the next one. I always like to do a double check before I cut or before I press them that I've actually gotten everything that I need to weed out. And that everything that I've weeded has been the correct thing and I haven't missed something and accidentally left something on here because that has happened many times before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now place this and careful because this this section of the infusible ink seems to be coming up it's separated from the from the backing so when I press it onto the mug I'm just going to be careful and make sure that it sticks now this part is the part that I always struggle with so if you guys struggle with this as well don't worry you're not alone I never get this right on the first try So what I should have done with this, now there's going to be little white lines in between because it is a little bit narrow, but that's all right. So what I should have done with this is cut it on one solid sheet um, and not maybe made it a little bit wider. So the last project worked out perfectly, but this one, I think it's still going to look great. Let's see. It's a little bit more. I need to move it a little bit more towards this side. And you guys will see what I'm talking about in a moment. Will the mugs be dishwasher safe? Yes, they will, Kim. That's why I like, that's why I prefer infusible ink mugs or sublimation mugs to normal ones. On a little bit skew. There we go. That looks a little bit better. There we go. If you were to use the pieces for another set of mugs, do you put it down on transfer tape? So transfer tape is not, not suitable for use with heat at all. You would need to use a like a heat mask with it. So I'm just double checking that this is lining up. Okay. This is lined up. So once you've got all the bubbles out, I like to just 
make sure that I've got everything out, that the design is as tight to the mug as possible. Because bubbles and things like that can cause moisture, which will cause blurs in your design. So you really want to make sure that it is as stuck down as it possibly can be. Okay, now we take a piece of copy paper. And I'm just going to cut this copy paper in half. <laughs> Hi, Irma. You don't like the stickiness of infusible inks. You always have trouble aligning it. Me too. Me too. It's always a case of align, realign, align, realign, align, realign. <laughs> I'm glad that you can join us, Irma, and that you wanted to watch my debossing video and that you noticed that I was live. What a luck, hey? Amazing. Okay, so I just cut it down just a little bit so that it fits around, but you don't have to. You don't have to cut it down. And then we're going to place it on the mug around the, the Teflon sheet around the mug like that. I'm then going to zoom out so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And we're going to then open up the mug press just by lifting up the handle, placing the mug into the mug press. Realigning our sandwich because we dropped it. <laughs> Just trying to get everything lined up properly. Okay. There we go. There we go. I don't know why that was so hard the first time. And then I like to hold the mug handle just off to the side a little bit. So that when you close it, you can shift the handle around so that the handle stays in the middle of this little opening here. And then once the handle goes down, you will see this light start ticking. Oh, sorry, wrong way. This light start flashing a little bit. So that means that it's now starting to count. And it's ticking down the six minutes or so that it takes to actually cook the mug. So we're going to put that off to the side. And once it gets towards the end of the cooking schedule, whatever you want to call it, then we will be able to start with the next one. So, um, so Irma was saying that she was going to watch the, de the debossing and embossing video. And then she noticed that I was live from one year ago. Great. Yeah, that video is doing very well at the moment. Um, it's a very popular video. And I quite quite like the actual how it came out. And I'm just cutting this off so that I can use this again later as well. Because again, even though I have lots of infusible ink, I still don't like to waste anything. Um, so this is the second house, second mug template. So we're going to go with this one. Okay. And there's lots of little pieces of paper lying around. So instead of leaving it on my workspace, I'm going to clean it up. And the reason why I'm going to clean that up while I'm working is because some of those pieces will contain ink. And if those little pieces of ink get stuck to an area on the infusible ink sheet that doesn't have any ink then what will happen is it'll actually start transferring onto the mug once it's in the mug press so we want to try and make sure that the surface stays as clean as possible from any debris because that will affect how the mug is going to look at the end so i'm just going to be weeding off these little sections of the mug. Hi, Z hi, Lydia. Glad to have you. Thank you for joining. 
why do you use a Teflon sheet as well? Zelda, I think I'm just a little bit overly cautious. I love my mug press and I don't want it to be damaged in any way. When it comes to the paper, the corners of the paper sometimes burn, which discolor the silicone on the mug press, which can affect the press. So I like to use the Teflon sheet just as an added barrier of protection. So I'm going to pull off all of the elements that I can without using a weeding tool because the mug the infusible ink works very nicely without a weeding tool and I'm going to keep my weeding tool handy because these little mirrors that we have here I mean not mirrors windows that we have here I'm just moving this closer so that I can see better because I'm practically blind because I want to make sure that all of these windows stay on the infusible ink and almost all of them have except for the one which is fine there we go perfect and then we can weed this one out as well Okay, we're almost halfway through on the mug press. So that is going to come out very soon. I'm just pulling off the remnants of the infusible ink on the bottom so that that doesn't affect the press. And then we work on the other little sections. A little triangle and a chimney of the house. There we go. Okay, we're on the last bar of this one. So what I want to do is show you guys how I prep the cooling down of the mug. So like I said, I have a flask just here for the live stream so that I could keep it warm. And it's got warm water in it. So you'll be able to see some of the steam coming off. So I'm going to pour this into the bowl. And not completely fill it. So that when the mug comes out, I can just dunk it into the, the actual water and make it so that it's not, so that it cools the mug down quicker. So as soon as it's done, because it's now on the last, the last bar, we can then do that as soon as it comes out. And I also want to get the next mug in so that that cycle goes now quickly. Okay, Let's see, so the next mug is now, first mug is ready, so we're going to open up the mug press just by lifting up the handle, sorry it's a little bit off screen so I can't show you, and then the mug is now done, so you can just dunk it immediately into the water, I don't always like doing that, so I'm going to flip it over, I mean take the thing off, And you can hear the mug sizzling. And the one thing that we forgot to do, but it doesn't really matter with this particular template, is to mirror it. I almost had a heart attack now. I thought I did it the wrong way. But it doesn't actually matter because it's there's no text on this one. So it's not the end of the world, but not something that we want to get into the habit of doing. So there we go. There's the first mug done. It's still quite hot, 
So I'm actually going to leave it in the water for a little bit, especially while we quickly press and add on the next one. Uh, we're going to check to see that it's the right way up. It is the right way up. We're going to then place it over the mug, line it up just on the edge there as well as we can. And I want to try and get this done as quickly as I can so that we can get on to the next one. Okay, there we go. I, the reason why I like using the infusible ink is because it does have the sticky side. I know Jessica said she, that the sticky side is a little bit difficult to deal with. It is, but then I don't have to use heat tape. So I don't have to have rolls and rolls of heat tape because the um, infusible ink itself sticks for me. I'm trying to just get this in the middle as I can. It's going to be a little bit of a white line in between the designs. In between the mugs but it is still going to look so beautiful okay so that's done so you this is what i was talking about about the paper burning now that's you can see where the mug was and where the rest of the design was which is okay so i'm just actually going to reuse this piece of paper and pop it back into the heat press or the mug press I wouldn't reuse it too many times, the paper. Um, I would just reuse it one or two times. And then again, just hold, hold it so that the handle is in the middle. And then close it. And then let that, let that go. So. Sorry, that noise is probably going to be a little bit annoying for you guys. So, this is what our first mug looks like. Got the little road coming into the village and then our little tree a house and our little Christmas tree so that's gonna look super cute and that's gonna be the base so we're doing first one to the second one to the third one and we're working our way up okay then we're gonna start with the third one now that that one is in the press and I'm just going to keep all of these off to the side just in case I want to use them like as an example there's no use in throwing this away because this even though it doesn't have the backing on it I could still fit a few trees on here and still use this section so even if I didn't want to make a mug with it I can actually still use it there's no reason to throw it away the little pieces like this where it's just a little wispy like that one I'm gonna need to throw away because <laughs> I can't use that so that is the top one so we're gonna do that one last and this is the second one so again I'm just going to peel off the edge and vacuum my room later because there's gonna be lots of little pieces of infusible ink all over the floor <laughs> so Irma says she needs to use her mug press more often you have so much infusible ink what are other ways you can use infusible ink? That is a very good question. So the ways that you can use infusible ink are, like I mentioned, we did this last week on last week's live. This is an, a white acrylic blank. You can use them on acrylics. So I also used it on a clear acrylic blank. And as you can see, it also came out quite nicely, but it's not as vibrant. That is the white. And that one is the clear. It's not as vibrant, but it still looks really nice. Some acrylic will work better than others because acrylic comes in both cast and extruded. So it depends on how the acrylic was manufactured. That depends on how well it's going to handle the heat from the infusible ink. But because infusible ink sets at 45 seconds and not 90 seconds like most sublimation, it makes it a little bit easier and you're able to get away with using it on things like acrylic much easier than what you would 
for things like a sublimation. So be careful not to bend the infusible ink because if you bend it and crease it, then that will affect what your press is going to look like. So when you're working with your hands like this, just try and be as gentle as you can. It's probably a better idea, better practice to work with a weeding tool. Because the weeding tool is a little bit less abrasive. Do acrylic blanks have to be made for sublimation or can it be without the polyester coating? So Marilyn, acrylic is essentially a, it's, I'm not sure exactly what it's made out of, but it almost seems like it is some kind of material that accepts sublimation. So it doesn't need to be, strictly speaking, specified for sublimation, but your results will not be as good on a on all acrylic because not all acrylic is created equal so some acrylic will be better suited for sublimation than others because there's two different types of acrylic there's cast versus extruded so on oh I never remember which is which it's like left and right it takes me a while to figure out which one is which but on the one type of acrylic you will have a better result because it's used to it's being able to withstand the heat and it will your design will then still come out nice and glossy on the other type of acrylic it will be um it'll come out a little bit matte so it won't it may not look as nice which is okay it's not the end of the world Especially when it's something like this. Like this, this I can just add as a little keychain or a charm onto a keychain. And it actually works perfectly. So I don't need to make sure that it's specific sublimation acrylic. And our next mug is almost ready. And we haven't finished weeding this one yet, guys. But that's fine. Gives us a little bit of time. There we go. Okay. So I'm just opening up the flap and lifting the mug out. Pulling off the paper. And dunking it into the water. And I'm going to let it sit there for a little bit while we finish off this one. So it's fun at how quick these things actually go once you get into the rhythm. There we go. Now I'm just going to double check that I've gotten all of the dots and things and stars it's one of those things where I need to take my glasses off because I'm ne nearsighted that's the one where you can see very close I think farsighted is the one where you can't see very close double checking the design and then I need to take a mug out I only took two out of the box so now you guys get to see inside the box so inside the box each mug comes in its own little box which is really nice and then inside that they all come in a little packet in bubble wrap so the packaging is really nice so if you wanted to send this off to a client, you could then just pop it back in the original packaging and everything would be fine. So we're going to make sure that it's the right way up. Move it around the mug. And then loosely stack it down. Okay. 
and then start with twirling it around and then fix any errors that we may have made like in terms of getting it at an incorrect angle okay going back the other way Thank you, Jessica. Cast is better. The uh, cast acrylic is the better result. Now I can never remember whether it's cast or extruded. I always seem to think that it's the other one and not the main one. Okay, that is wildly off center. So we are going to fix that with immediate effect. <laughs> okay, and I know that that's also a little bit skew. This is why I'm so glad I have people like Jessica in my life. Not only does she help everybody with their printer settings for their sublimation printers, but she's also just a powerhouse of knowledge and a great friend to have. Do the acrylic blanks have to be made? Okay, we've already answered that question. Great. So Irma says, I buy my infusible ink sheets from Cricut, Michaels, and Joann's, and Hobby Lobby when they're on sale. I'm always so jealous of those of you in the US. I cannot wait to go to the US one day and be able to go to places like Hobby Lobby and Joann's, because we don't really have shops at that kind of a scale. I mean, our, our craft shops are very small, and they are not, not nearly as awesome as the ones that you have. So I'm just making sure that this is lined up properly because it is not currently. It's about a little bit off. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. See, this is just this is what I do when it comes to mugs. I remove the back packaging and then put it back on. Then remove it and then put it back on. Then remove it and put it back on. Well, the the infusible ink every time, every time. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to use a fresh sheet of paper because I that one looks a little bit worse for wear. As you can see, it's quite it looks like a marshmallow, but not as tasty. <laughs> and I'm just going to pop the third mug into the mug press. So we're going to take this mug out, dry it off, there we go, <laughs> you're welcome Jess, oh it's so pretty. So pretty. There we go, and we have the start of the twinkles. Very exciting. And of course, when we line them up, they start forming the picture, which is gonna be difficult for me to show you guys because my camera is uh, the other way the picture starts forming. I'm so excited. And now we go for the third one. I mean the fourth one. The third one's already in the press, Kelly. And again, I'm just trying to move all of the debris out of the way. so that we have a clean surface on which to work. I think I may have even dropped some water on there, there, and there. So that'll be interesting to see how that turns out. So the water will, it, that will make a difference on the, on the end result, there and there. So while it's not ideal, it'll be interesting to, to show you guys what it actually looks like once you put water on infusible ink 
because you can also treat it like a little bit of watercolor and have it a little bit watery so it's gonna be cool do you have to wait set or cure before putting them into the dishwasher no I, I don't I've never heard that with infusible ink I mean I wouldn't put them straight into the dishwasher just to because there's no need um, I would probably wait a day or so but it's it, it's not it's not like HTV from things that with with the sublimation ink it only reacts to temperatures of like above 160 degrees or 375 or what's that 330 degrees Fahrenheit I think somewhere around there and that's even that is barely it, it, it only just starts reacting so if you were to put into the dishwasher your dishwasher doesn't get nearly that hot so theoretically it shouldn't make a difference at all it shouldn't affect anything um i would i probably like i said i wouldn't i wouldn't do it right from the word go just to be safe but i don't i don't see how it would cause it. i haven't heard that being said about um infusible ink so i'm going to very carefully remove the reindeer Very carefully remove the reindeer. Welcome, Mary, calling from the USA. Where in the US are you from? It's good to have you with us. Thank you for joining. Susan says, "Any know anyone know if the sanitized cycle gets hot enough to ruin the mugs? I know that I'm pretty sure the sanitized cycle works on like a 90 degree cycle, so I doubt it. What you can do is if you you get different grades of mug, so like you get your cheap mugs and then you get like your more expensive, supposedly dishwasher safe mugs, or a mug that you've tested with and that is like your first mug that you've made. Maybe you've made a mistake on it." something like that so what you can do is take a, a mistake a mug that you've made a mistake on and use that as a test so run it into the dishwasher a few times run it through those cycles just to see if it will actually affect the print maybe take a before and after photo uh, before one wash and maybe after five or six washes or so and just see if it actually makes a difference there's a little bit of the legs of the in, um, reindeer that came with but I doubt this this is going to be very difficult to get this to stay I don't even know where it went now it fell somewhere <laughs> and I don't know where it fell Okay, that's interesting. Alrighty then. Well, wow, that was that was the that was a super quick six minutes, you guys. Super super quick. Okay, let's move this out the way. Yes, yes, I know. It continues yelling at you until until you've taken the mug out. So we're taking the mug out, and I'm somewhere just gonna dump this uh no actually i'm not going to because then everything's wet and then it's a nightmare okay <gasps> richmond texas that's exciting lovely to have you lovely lovely to have you thank you for joining okay so let's place that in the bin Leave that to cool down for a second or so. And then we take out the last mug. Oh Lord. Oh, thank you, Mom. Um, so, Lydia, the reason why I put the mugs into the water is because the mugs are still very hot. And if you leave them not in water, if you leave them to just cool down on the surface, on the, on the, the table, then the ink on the mug 
will continue to rise and continue to travel. And it then travels up the mug. So it'll leave you with not nice crisp edges and it won't look as nice. So I'm just making sure that I've got all the dots and the snow and things like that. Because I think I missed a few pieces before. One little dot seemed to get on the reindeer. That would not be good. So when by dunking it in the, the water, what you do is you reduce the temperature of the mug. You bring the temperature down. So what that does is it stops the sublimation process because that's essentially what infusible ink is it is sublimation and it then makes it so that the lines on the mug are nice and clear and that your project is not going to look all streaky and have all ugly lines on it and things like that i hope that makes sense Okay, that was not even at all. <gasps> Welcome. Welcome from Berlin. Good to have you. I love how seeing just how many people from all over the world are joining in. We have Germany, Berlin. Well, Germany is Berlin. The Netherlands, Texas, Wisconsin. Oh, it makes me very happy. How things like this can just bring people together from all over the world and we all have the same common interest it is awesome so i'm just again making sure that it is even on both sides uh, i will lastly make sure that i've gotten all the bubbles out and things just to be sure there we go and then we place the last mug in you guys Exciting. Okay. Place the last mug in. There we go. All right. So, I mean, I can totally keep, you know, this, this section of the of our little reindeer. I can absolutely keep that and try that, use that on a different project. And then let's take a look at this one. There we go. You can comment on the water, it stops the sublimation process, but you can also leave the mug with the paper on to cool down completely, or at least cold to the touch. This will prevent fades. Yes. Yeah. So I, I went over that. I don't know if you were in the live earlier, Jess, uh, when I went over that earlier, but that's 100% correct. I mean, she's like the sublimation queen. She, She's taught me many things, so we all know that she is incredible. So that's the third one. And that has the... Oh, it looks so cute. It's even look look at the little Santa, you guys. Oh, this this might be my favorite one of the lot. So we can take a So we start seeing it all come together. It's obviously difficult for me to line them up perfectly when um they're in my hands like this. But super, super, super cute. I'll show them all to you properly once we're all done. Hi, Sophia. Well, from, from Greece. That's incredible. And Sam's joining us from the UK. Amazing. Swede mother life. Yay, finally, you can say hello from Sweden. Amazing. The only way to write to me is via the YouTube app. Well, you learned something new today. Fantastic. Welcome. Thank you. I love, I love it when you all comment on the videos and tell me how much you've learned and things like that. And... It's and and like seeing your super chats pop up and the super thanks and things like that. It really it completely makes my day. Like, um, it's just it's so much fun to do this for you, and to know how much it 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 uh, you guys appreciate it and how much it helps you, 
is just cherry on the top. So I'm very excited to see what this is going to turn out to be. We're almost done. Now this is the part where I normally try and do what I'm doing now, just try and clean up my work surface a little bit. Oh, I'm so excited to see all the mugs together. Oh, these are going to be so great. So, so, so great. Oh, is that what you meant, Orla? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so the stackable mugs all stack on top of each other like this. They have a little groove at the bottom, which means that they, f they nest just inside the next mug and they can't really move. So when you, when you pull, hold them like that, they all move because they're all nested, nested one on top of the other. And now we have a super cool design on all of them. Oh, so excited. Oh, very exciting. Very exciting. You did the snowman mug wrap for a friend. She loves it. She keeps going on about how unique it was. I'm so glad, Diana. That was one of my favorite mugs. My my husband tends to use that mug quite a lot, which is quite funny. And I think I've even got one over here. For those that want to know what she's talking about, it's this one. So this is the, the handle of the mug. And this is another one of my videos that I have showing you how to do this kind of a design on the mug and then it says is it Christmas yet that's just this one I've got another one that says some people are worth melting for which is also super cute but this is just one of my favorite favorite mugs I love it and I, I keep it very close to me you can see it's got so much dirt in it because I don't I don't use it I just keep it here um, because it's it's very special to me <laughs> oh you're from Dublin Orla that's amazing. I actually went to Dublin in 2020, literally in February of 2020, and then the world shut down in March. So that was quite a, quite a, quite a thing because the whole, you know, the issue <laughs> that happened with the world. And um, I managed to get back a couple days. Well, I got back on the 13th of February, I think, just before Valentine's Day. And yeah, then the world shut down a month later, <laughs> which was quite hectic. So this mug is done. And I'm going to put the mug press off. I just about, I almost touched the mug. I'm sure you can see, like my hand went to touch the mug. No, Kelly, don't. There we go. So we immediately bring down the temperature of the mug so that the sublimation process stops. Because essentially what the word sublimation means, it's the conversion of a solid substance to, a li to its liquid phase without, sorry, the conversion of a solid substance to the gas phase without passing the liquid. So normally, like water as an example, it goes from ice to water to water vapor so it goes into the liquid phase but sublimation ink doesn't do that so we cool it down and then it's still pretty hot but I mean you can still touch it shortly after it just helps your workflow a little bit better but again like we said you can also always just leave the the casing on the actual mug and just not not touch it and let it cool down normally. <laughs> I'm glad that you guys like the snowman mug. It's one of my favorites as well. So then we have this one. Whoa, whoa, not on screen. <laughs> there we go. So you see like the, the, the water kind of affected it, but not actually really. So I'm very glad a little bit a little bit of a dot over there, but not too much. It looks beautiful. I think it burnt just a little bit on the edge there, but that's fine. So, 
So Jessica doesn't have a YouTube channel or Facebook, but she, if you call her on Facebook groups and you need help with your profiles, your color profiles on your converted printers, she does offer that as a service. So for a small little fee, um, she will help you get your color profiles right, get your press and times right and things like that. She is amazing. Okay, so we now have all four of our mugs done. So this is going to be difficult for me to show you on the main camera. So I'm actually going to show you here. So there we go. We've lined them up properly. So that's what it looks like. bottom one is not aligned <laughs> look at how perfect those are oh this is exactly what I wanted exactly what I wanted I'm loving the top two the one with the moon and then Santa it's just oh I think the, I think the third one is probably my favorite I'm so 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 glad these all turned out really, really well. Let me see if I can show you guys. Oh, there we go. Difficult, again, difficult to, um, especially with the handles. There we go. I'm trying to like hold them together. beautiful so perfect i'm so glad that you guys all joined me and this class was a lot longer than i had anticipated i thought it was only going to be like an hour long and it's now two hours <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining i'm thrilled with how they came out even though we forgot to mirror them that's okay because they are still perfect they still came out really nicely. And like I said, each of these work individually as their own mugs. So here we've got a Santa and then a little cloud. And then we've got a trees. You know, they all work as their own individual mugs, but they work best all together. So again, thank you guys so, so, so much for joining. I am thrilled to have had you with me. Um, definitely check out some of these mug videos. I'm going to add a playlist here and I hope to see you in another video very, very soon. Don't forget to subscribe for more fun, free live classes, free videos, everything. If you'd like to share your appreciation, consider joining the channel. We do live streams as channel members. I share videos, excess, extra videos and things like that regularly. We have a lot of fun. And you are welcome to also send a super chat or buy me a coffee or something like that if you would like to help support the channel. I love you all so very much for joining me. Thank you again a million times over. Have a wonderful weekend. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.